All right, and we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Metalcore and Muscle. This is episode number 10 of the podcast, and I've got a very special episode in store for you here today. So what I'm going to do for today's episode, I've picked five songs from the kind of what I would coin as the golden era of Metalcore, and this is the 2010s Metalcore lyrical analysis episode. So what I've done is I picked five songs from that era of metalcore, um, from five of my favorite bands, and I'm going to do a deep dive into the lyrics of each of these songs and provide some interpretation of what I think these songs are about. Um, I've picked songs that I've kind of previewed the lyrics a little bit, so and I am familiar with these songs as well, but I wanted to look at songs that had a little bit of a deeper meaning to the lyrics. And like I said, provides some lyrical analysis to this. So um, if you're a fan of metalcore, especially what I would coin as the golden era, which is like the 2010s metalcore, um, then I think you're gonna enjoy this episode. Um, if you are watching this episode on YouTube, you can see that I'm wearing a Memphis Mayfire tank top. And I was lucky enough to go to Warp Tour. Um, now they, they don't do the Warp Tour anymore. Um, I went in 2015 and my girlfriend at the time, wife now, um, she got us tickets to go for my birthday. So, um, it was a great experience. I was lucky enough to see some of my favorite bands, some of which are included in these bands today. Um, and you know, obviously Memphis Mayfire was there. I was able to, to meet the band and they signed my tank. So I really try not to wear this tank top at all ever just because, I don't want to ruin it with their signatures on there, but um, Memphis Mayfire was was and still is one of my favorite bands. Um, I kind of wasn't as into them in recent years, but now they're coming back out with some new music, and I'm starting to get back into them. So we're gonna we're gonna round out today's episode with my workout song of the week. Um, but let's dive into these five metalcore songs. So. The first song that we're going to dive into is from the band Bless the Fall, and they've been fairly quiet recently with releasing new music. Um, some of my favorite songs by them include Bottom Feeder, Rain, uh, To Hell and Back, What's Left of Me. Um, What's Left of Me and To Hell and Back came off of their album called Witness, which came out in 2009. So I went to their next album, and the song that I'm going to be analyzing is called Don't Say Goodbye. So I'm just going to go through the lyrics here, kind of reading through them, and then I'll provide my analysis on what the song is about. So the lyrics for Don't Say Goodbye um, start off with, Do you remember when you lost hope and faith in this world? When will it change? Don't say goodbye, say goodbye, because I know you can try to open your eyes. It's all inside. You will wake from this nightmare, and I know you'll find a better way. Now it seems like you're bleeding just to feel alive. Your arms always tell the story. So kind of just from that clip there, um, what I take from this is that they're talking about somebody that's maybe going through depression. Um, you know, they're, they're in that depressive state at the time that, you know, it kind of that's the setting for the, the lyrics here. So open your eyes, it's all inside. So that battle that they're facing is within themselves. And the, the person that's writing the lyrics is maybe encouraging them, you'll wake from this nightmare, I know you'll find a better way. And then they say, now it seems like you're bleeding just to stay alive or to feel alive. So I think they're referring there to cutting, which some people um, do in that, you know, like self-harm. So they're saying that bleeding just to feel alive, so maybe cutting to feel to feel something, right? And then the line, the next line is your arms always tell the story. So definitely referring to cutting there. Um, arms, you know, if you cut on your wrists or that type of thing, like the scars will be there. So that's, I think that's what they're referring to there. Um, then it says, and it looks like you're living just to pass the time. Digging deeper, you're trying to find, find the strength to carry on. There is salvation, keep holding on, keep holding. So right there, you know, referencing kind of just going through the motions, you're living just to pass the time. I'm sure that people, you know, I've never been diagnosed with depression, but I think all of us do go through 
you know, times where we might feel down. Um, so just kind of relating to that from my own experience, um, you know, you just kind of feel like you're going through the motions sometimes. And then I like the line, there is salvation. So whoever is writing these lyrics, encouraging this person that's going through depression, like there, there is another, there's an end to this. There is another side that you can get to. Um, there is salvation. So then they go into the chorus here. Don't say goodbye, say goodbye, because I know you can try to open your eyes. It's all inside. You will wake from this nightmare and I know you'll find a better way. So that's the chorus. Um, then we go into the next verse here. You've gone too far, even though I know you're dying to let go. You've gone too far. You've given up. Now you have to tell yourself, where did you go wrong? And stop yourself from falling down. I can see you running so far away. I can see you running so far away. Don't you give up. Don't give up. So really, you know, I think the, the lyricist for this, whoever wrote the lyrics, they're really encouraging this person, you know, don't give up. Um, you know, just don't let go, like don't give up. And I'm assuming that they're talking about suicide here. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm um, definitely self harm. You know, this person that's experiencing this depression and this pain just wants to let go. Um, but they're saying you, you've gone too far. You've experienced all this. Don't give up. You're, you're almost there to, to salvation. You're almost there to, um, getting out of this pain. So those are pretty much the lyrics for the song. Um, it's definitely, a can evoke some emotion there, especially if you know someone that's gone through that type of pain or depression, or even yourself, you know, it can be an encouraging um, set of lyrics there to, to, to encourage you to keep pushing forward. Um, and, you know, keep going and don't give up. And really the song don't say goodbye. So it's a great song. There's some hard parts in there. It's definitely a good workout song as well. Um, it's not a slow song by any means. So um, be sure to check out don't say goodbye by Bless the Fall. All right, and that came out in 2011, so just fitting into that kind of golden era that I was talking about. So <clears throat> let's move into the next song here. We are gonna go into a very popular band, especially at this time, and that band is A Day to Remember. So A Day to Remember did release an album this past year, I believe it was called Mind Reader. Um, it didn't fare too well with people. Um, a lot of people were criticizing this past album. Um, but UB Tales, I'll Be Sonic is the song that I'm going to be analyzing here. This is off their album, What Separates Me From You. And this song came out also in 2011. So I remember listening to this in high school. And then with the previous song from Bless the Fall, I remember listening to that um, before football games to try to get motivated. So um, a Day to Remember was definitely heavy and definitely fits in that awesome time of metalcore. So for UB Tales, I'll Be Sonic, the lyrics go, I'm a mess, that's the best way to describe it. Having no time to myself is the only way I can fight it. When I'm alone, it's like I'm staring into a mirror. Don't know the person inside it, and that's never been any clearer. I miss your family, and I miss all of our friends. If you had to do it over, would you do it over again? Because I would, it means something more to me. There's a hole in my heart where you used to be. So that's kind of the first section there. Um, I'm assuming that whoever wrote these lyrics is referring to a breakup. Um, and I think that they're, the, the line here, um, having no time to myself is the only way I can fight it. So I think that sometimes people, when they're experiencing something hard, like a breakup like that, um, you know, they will try to fill their schedule with things. They'll try to constantly be doing things to try to keep their mind off of the reality of, you know, losing that person or um, sort of distract them from, you know, themselves or facing that reality. So I think that's what he's referring to there. And then the next line is, when I'm alone, it's like I'm staring into a mirror. So um, when you are alone and you're not doing things or filling things up with, you know, social events or whatever, then you're forced to, you know, look in the mirror and sort of face that reality. So, you know, obviously there's no context of like, I mean, and this is all assumption as well, but there's no context of what this person did to, you know, cause this breakup or if they got dumped, you know, so, um, but definitely it sounds like some self-evaluation needs to be had there. Um, then they go into, you know, don't know the person inside it and it's never been any clearer. So maybe just feeling like they kind of lost themselves. Um, and then kind of reaching out to this person that they lost, um, you know, if, if we could do it, if you could do this again, I'm assuming they'd be in this relationship, would you do it over again? Um, and they're saying, 
there's a hole in my heart where you used to be. So, you know, maybe not a breakup, maybe they lost somebody like a, a death or a passing. So, um, I'm not sure. And then we go into, well, actually before that, they say, I miss your family and I miss all of our friends. So, um, I definitely think it more of a breakup with that line there. Um, because I know sometimes, you know, when you're with somebody, or even friends, you know, if it's a friend, like if you are friends with someone and they have their own friends and you have yours, you kind of link up and the entire group becomes friends. So if you end up separating, then you lose those friends and that person's family, obviously, if you were close there. Um, so then the next set of lines here, I still wish you the best of luck, baby. And don't go thinking that it was a waste of time. I couldn't forget you if I tried. So yeah, I think it definitely refers to a breakup here. Um, then it goes into you killed what was left of the good in me. I'm tired. So let me be broken. Look down at the mess that's in front of me. No other words need to be spoken. And I've got nobody else to blame, though I tried. Kept all our past mistakes held inside. I'll live with regret for my whole life. So yeah, definitely assuming that whoever wrote these lyrics probably experiencing some sort of regret. Uh, maybe they made a mistake and that's kind of what led to this, this breakup. Um, and, you know, he says no other words need to be spoken. So, um basically taking the blame for it, but it's hard for him to sort of live with that. That's what I'm taking from that. So, um, yep. And then, so as we go into lyrics and going into this, I don't really know the lyrics for this song that well. So, and it says, I confess that I brought this all on myself. So yeah, definitely, um, what I was saying before condemned to suffer alone. Like there's nobody else when you're gone. It's like a whole part of me is missing. So I'll keep living the lie and just hope that you're listening. I tried to make us a life here but our foundation was built on sand no time to run until the damage was done and i've never had the upper hand and then it goes back into the chorus um and let's see if there's anything new to finish out the song here um all the things you love are all the things i hate how did we get here in the first place oh i play it cool but it's hard to be um it's slowly burning inside of me there can't be any more progress. I know our fate. The only thing that can heal this is time and space. And then it goes into the chorus again and wraps up the song. So yeah, I think this song definitely about a breakup. Um, the line there, the only thing that can heal this is time and space. So, you know, the, the phrase time, time heals everything. So I'm assuming that whoever wrote this just needs some time away from that person and to really just face you know, what they have done and accept that and then really work on some self kind of growth and progression there. So that is UB Tales, I'll Be Sonic. This song is definitely pretty heavy as well. It could be used for working out, no doubt. Um, and kind of just gets you reflecting, you know, if you feel like you've made mistakes um, or if maybe you do notice that you feel, you kind of run from some of your problems by filling your schedule with social things you know, might be something to, to reflect on and work on. So um, that is UB Tales, I'll Be Sonic by A Day to Remember. All right, so let's get into the, we got two, we got three more songs that we're gonna analyze today. And the next one, this one I wanted to put in here, um, it is just outside of the 2010s metalcore era. This song came out in 2009. Um, but this comes from the band Oh Sleeper, which I've talked about on this podcast before. And I've talked about this song, The Finisher, before. But I also want to talk about the song Son of the Morning as well. So there are two songs that kind of go together. Um, and I just want to set the, set the table for, for this entire album. So this album is called Son of the Morning by O Sleeper. And O Sleeper is a Christian metalcore band. So just so you kind of know that there are Christian themes to this entire album. So Son of the Morning is the first song of the album. And Son of the Morning can, I, I believe that this can also be a phrase for Satan, like another name for, for Satan, if I remember correctly from what I've watched on interviews with the band. And then this song is really about the the devil sort of calling out God and, and this is the way they describe it. I don't know if this is actually something that is from the Bible, 
Um, but I'm just referencing this from what I've heard the band say about this album in interviews. So Son of the Morning is the, the devil sort of calling out God. And then it goes through this entire album. And then the last song in the album is The Finisher, which is basically God's reply to the devil from that first song. And basically, you know, God is the finisher. He's got the last word here. So um, the album art for this album is really cool. It's a, a you know, a, an upside down star or a pentagram can be a, a logo for like Satan or demonic things. And the basically the top of the pentagram represents it represents like a goat, I believe, which can be another uh, symbol for the, for Satan. And then the two top pieces of the star are gone. So basically referring to the the horns ripped off the devil or ripped off this goat. And so it's really cool. That kind of goes with lyrics and the finisher. So this is going to be kind of a little two-parter. We're going to go through Son of the Morning and then we'll go through the finisher's lyrics. So Son of the Morning, the lyrics for this song um, this is from the devil's perspective and then God's perspective is mixed into this song as well. So the lyrics go, I am the rival. I am the one who speaks and whispers. So this is the devil. Hear me now, dear weak forgiver. He's calling out God here. Hear me now, weak forgiver. Hear me now. Don't send an angel to face the devil. You're wasting power on grace. A maggot will always seek to feed from the grave where I'll lead them and teach them to feast on the skin that defeats them, the skin they crave. And that is that is all the devil's perspective calling out God. And then God answers in the chorus here. It's kind of cool how they play on the different perspectives. And I mentioned this from Carpe Diem from August Burns Red. They kind of, I think, do this for that song as well. But then from God's perspective in this in this chorus, it says, if you could see like me, you'd see you haven't won anything. If you could see like me, you'd see it's by my grace that you're breathing. So without God's grace on on the devil or all of us, you know, we don't have anything there. So then um, he re they repeat, if you could see like me, you'd see I haven't won anything. If you could see like me, you'd see. And then the devil kind of comes back in. Every night I start my rise, climbing high into the morning sky. But soon after I lose your bride and I damn your son for stealing my light, this world is mine. So basically the devil's saying like the earth is mine. Um, they, then it goes into the chorus here. They call me the sun of the morning. I can mound all your fallen past the clouds as they roll in. And when I do, I will claim your throne through all these cowards you call your sons. And then I'm the Lord of air and my dawn will last forever. Go on pouring out because in the end I will have them. And then the lines that you know, from God's perspective, you could, if you could see like me, you see you haven't won anything kind of comes through there. Um, and then the last part of the line of the whole song is your light is fading. So it's almost like this kind of dark tone to the beginning of the album. Like, you know, the devil's calling out God here. And this is kind of dark, really a dark setting. So it's interesting to note because the band is actually a Christian band, but they're they're speaking in this perspective of the devil. So it's not like they're a demonic metal band. They're just using this to tell a story. So then the whole album goes on. There's a lot of really cool songs on this album. Um, World Without a Sun is one of my favorites. Um, Banquet for Traitors is a great song. Um, Reveries of Flight is another great one. But then we get to the finisher, which is the end. And this is the last song on the album, which is basically... God's reply to Son of the Morning, that first song. So this is from God's perspective here. Do you mean to challenge me? Because your speech is threatening to the writer of your history through a future perverted by envy. Your whisper may sway the weak, but when I speak, it roars the seas, which I think is awesome. I got, I got chills just reading this off here. So, you know, basically God is saying to the devil, your whisper will sway the weak people out there that, um, you know, don't have that rooted faith. And when I speak, it roars the seas. So saying like, you know, I have power. I created the earth, right? Um, then it says your challenge has been met because with a breath, I could snap your neck. This won't be like the first time you tried because my patience and mercy for you has run dry. You've watered among my bride and started seeds to feed your throne in flight. 
I will sing to the world your storm is capturing, and the angels will join me. We will sing to a world reborn from suffering, but mark my words, because if that tree keeps them from seeing me, I will burn off your limbs and you will never shade again. So I think this is actually referring to something from the Bible that I'm not familiar with. Um, but God's basically saying, like, if you're blocking, you know, people from seeing me, I will stop you from blocking them, right? Um, then it, the cool line here, you will bow at my feet or I'll rip out your knees and make your face all the carnage you crave. I am the finisher and I am forever. So really cool line there from like what would be God's perspective here saying this to the devil. Um, and then it kind of goes back into the line, I will sing for the world your storm is capturing um, and the angels will join me. We will sing to a world reborn from suffering. From the armories, the angels sing, you will see them end the suffering. Um, it repeats the line from the armories, the angels will sing. You will fear them when they lift their wings. They will sing to a world reborn. They will sing as I cut off your horns, I'll cut off your horns. So that refers to that broken pentagram that I was talking about before, which is the album art. Um, so kind of a cool way to tie that back in. Um, they have a cool music video for this as well, so be sure to check that out. But the music video came out in 2010, so that's what I'm using to justify that this came out with the 2010s metalcore. But <laughs> I think the album was actually released in in 2009. So um, really cool album. All of the songs are great. O Sleeper is just one of those classic metalcore bands. Um, and it has a really cool Christian meaning behind all of the songs. So be sure to check out O Sleeper, um, especially the songs Son of the Morning and The Finisher. So let's move into our last two here. We are going to move into another band that still is making a lot of music, especially last year, um, but they've had some lineup changes in their band, and this is Of Mice and Men. So I've talked about them before, I believe in the episode using breakdowns for PRs, my first episode of the podcast, I talked about the song OG Loco, which um, this band has had some lineup changes, like I mentioned. Um, their clean vocalist from the 2010s era, he has moved on to form the band called Day Shell. And then Austin Carlisle, he has left the band and focused on other endeavors. So they have um, the name of the, the bass player and, and lead vocalist now is slipping my mind, but he is from the band Jamie's Elsewhere. So Of Mice and Men, one of those, you know, pun intended OG um, metalcore bands, um, they've, they've had some big names coming through their lineup. So really cool to see the band, the former members going out and doing other things as well. But the song that I am picking for um, this, this episode right here is the song Second and Sebring. So this song came out in 2010, and this is off of their album... I believe it was just their self-titled album of Mice and Men. So the lyrics for this song go, I believe it's time for me to be famous and out of place. I believe it's time for me to move forward when I break through, when I break through. They repeat that a few times. Then it goes into, this time I'll make you proud to see me over, come on daylight, proud of who you raised, your shelter, your peacefulness. So this time I'll make you proud. And then it goes into, and that's kind of in the song, there's like a nice little do -do 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 breakdown in there. Um, you know, that was my best attempt through the, the vo through the microphone here, but <laughs> please listen to the song and actually, actually listen to the guitar work. Um, but yeah, so then it goes into, proud of who you raised up. You know that I will always be here till the end. Come back so I can say thank you for this home cooked meals and a place to rest my troubled head when you're away i've passed the test i've earned an a not just in school but in life you'll always be right by my side to help me show to help to help me show hope to all that are lost and sick in this dying world i'll use the love you left behind i'll change their minds i'll change their minds so for those of you that don't know the lead singer austin carlisle i believe suffers from marfan syndrome which if I remember correctly, and I could be totally wrong on this, I believe it's where your immune system attacks your your bones or your nerves, something like that. I should should look it up, um, but that that actually, if I, and I 
could be wrong on this too. I believe he has that. And I believe that his mother had that and, and passed away from that. And that's who he's kind of talking about in this song, in these lyrics. Um, you know, the, the section here where it says, come back so I can say thank you for this home cooked meals and a place to rest. So, you know, thanking his mom for, you know, providing that home essentially, um, uh, for pr providing, um, you know, a place to rest, creating that home and then saying, you know, basically he hopes that his mom is looking down and, and would be proud of who he is today. And so I think that for anyone out there listening that has lost a loved one, um, you know, a grandparent, a parent, a sibling, a friend, um, you know, I think that can be a hope or sentiment that you have sometimes is, you know, I hope that that person is looking down on me, that person's with me at all times, and I hope that they're proud of the things that I'm doing. And, um, you know, the line here, I'm getting kind of chills just thinking about that, like, you'll always be right by my side. So really powerful lyrics there. Um, and then it goes into, I hope, I hope you smile when you look down on me. I hope you smile. Um, when it goes into, I hope I make you proud. This is not what it is. Only baby scars. I need your love like a boy needs his mother's side. So, I mean, that line right there kind of says it all there. Um, this is not what it is, only baby scars. I need your love like a boy needs his mother's side. So it kind of rounds out the song here, um, just repeating that line a couple more times. So really a powerful song. Um, you know, when I think about workout songs that um, that are in the metalcore genre, I think of evoking a lot of emotion so that when you're, you know, when you're working out or running or doing whatever you're doing, um, the, the lyrics and the meaning behind the song, as well as the actual instrumental music portion can combine to really get those emotions going. And, um, you know, even if you're not using these songs to work out, it's just these songs, the lyrics are, are very emotional. And I think that sometimes for the general populace, they just think, oh, this is like just screamo music. It's all, you know, like there's no meaning there or that the meaning is really dark. And a lot of these songs, there is a dark tone to it, but they also are very uplifting and they, they're relatable as well. I mean, there's, you know, I think all of us can think of someone that we've lost. And I think that these, these lyrics help you sort of, um, not necessarily cope with that, but you can relate to the song a lot and it brings out that emotion, no doubt. So second Sebring, an awesome song from Of Mice and Men. Um, be sure to check that off or check that out. Um, it's off their album that is self-titled, I believe, Of Mice and Men. So be sure to check that one out. It's probably their most popular song from the past. Um, so if you haven't heard it, be sure to check it out. If you have heard it and you just didn't know the lyrics, hopefully now kind of know what the song is about a little bit more. But um, certainly brings on some emotions, no doubt. All right. So let's round into our last song that we're going to analyze today for lyrics. And this comes from the band Memphis Mayfire. So you guessed it, I'm wearing the shirt today. We had to had to analyze a Memphis Mayfire song. And the song that we're gonna do is maybe one of their, I would say least popular songs off of their album, The Hollow. So The Hollow came out in 2011 and The Redeemed, I believe is the last song on the album. So this song is a little bit longer, six minutes, six and a half minutes actually. And it's not, you can definitely work out to this song, but I would say it's more of a song that you'd listen to when you're in, in the car or if you're doing cardio. Um, there's not really like a lot of like smacking breakdowns, but the song is long and it kind of, the lyrics definitely make you think a little bit. So let's get into the lyrics. Um, for, for those of you that don't know, the hollow, every song starts with the, so there's the sinner, the unfaithful, the victim, the commanded, the haunted, um, the deceived, and then the redeemed. And then I believe the last one is the reality. The reality comes before the redeemed, but nonetheless, and then there's the burden as well, the interlude track. So this song, every you could almost analyze every one of these songs lyrically. Um, I think that every song is relatable to somebody. And that's what really got me into Memphis Mayfire in the first place um, was this album. So I listened to The Sinner first. And then um, if you guys remember Groove Shark, it was kind of like Spotify before Spotify. Um, 
people would just upload music on there and you could just listen to it like you would on Spotify, but they maybe hadn't, I think GroupShark had an app at one point and then, then Spotify and all the other services just took over. Um, but I remember listening to this entire album front to back on GroupShark. And then I found out they had one of my friends, Jared, shout out Jared, if you're listening. Um, he showed me the Between the Lies EP and then it was like, oh man, these guys are great. They have tons of awesome music that that I hadn't even heard before The Hollow. And then they released uh, the Ch Challenger album and then kind of um, had didn't really stay into them after The Challenger. But now they're actually releasing new music that is kind of reminiscent of their older stuff. So we'll get into that later. But let's get into the lyrics for The Redeemed. So the lyrics go... Let go of everything, let go of everything. What is it that you're holding on to? Um, what will it matter when every history book is consumed in the flames? Soon it will be like you never existed. Not a single soul will remember your name. So let's just take that chunk there. Really powerful lyrics here. Um, you know, basically saying like, you know, we, we spend our time on earth and the things that we do here are not going to be remembered in, you know, 200 years or so. Like the history books are all going to be burned. Um, you know, no one will remember our names in like, you know, however many years, whatever. Um, <clears throat> then it goes into the section here. Everyone is flawed. Everyone has a story to tell, but every story has an ending. So stop acting like there won't be one. Then it goes into the, I think these next lyrics are really powerful here. These bones are only, only temporary. Let go of all you know. You're on your own, but not alone. You'll never be alone. These bones are temporary. Let go of all you know. And it kind of repeats that. Then it says the destination lies ahead. We are not alone. We are not alone. So let's, let's dive into these ones here. So then it goes into the, the section. These bones are only temporary, I think is a really powerful line, right? So basically stating that you know, your, your soul, your character, what you do on this earth, um, your, your soul matters more than what you have. So this, this body is temporary. Um, the, the items that we own are temporary, but your soul will, will move on. Your soul will, it's, it's more of your character that matters, right? So saying the destination lies ahead. We're not alone forget then live right now. So that line alone, like, I think we just need to be more present as people. And that's something that I'm trying to work on personally is living more in the moment. Um, then they say everything rides on tomorrow. When that day comes, will, will you hear well done, well done. So I know that Maddie Mullins is a Christian. So I'm assuming that these lyrics have some Christian tie to them a little bit. So I think when he, when he says, when that day comes, will you hear well done, well done? I think he's referring to judgment day. And basically, when you were faced with your judgment with God, will you hear well done, well done? I think is what he's referring to. So, um, you know, let's, let's just keep going here. So it says, your eternity is worth so much more than their opinions of you. Defined not by where you've been, knowing you'll be made new. So... I think this is directly referring to that judgment day, right? Um, your eternity is worth so much more than their opinions of you. So not, <clears throat> excuse me, not living on earth to please other people and living more for, I think what he's referring to as what God would want for your life. So <clears throat> basically saying like, don't live for other people and their opinions of you your, your character means so much more than that. And then it goes into these bones are only temporary. Let go of all you know. You'll be on your own, but not alone. You'll never be alone. So that line, I think, definitely refers to God being with you at all times. You're, you're on your own. You might be alone in your apartment, um, but you're not actually alone because God is with you. I think that's what he's saying there. Um, then it kind of repeats a couple more lines. Then it says... I can't say the past will never get in the way. Just remember all things come and go, but they don't mean a thing. It's not about what you have now. It's what you, it's what you have in store. So that line, I think definitely kind of confirms what I've been thinking here 
as far as it's not about the material things that you have now. You can have a, an awesome house or a fancy car or, you know, all these items in your home. Um, but is your character good? Like, are you a good person? Um, so basically saying that it's not about what you have now. It's what you have in store. It's more at the, the end of your life, the, the interactions that you have with other people, the character, th that legacy will live on, not the items that you have from a materialistic standpoint. So then he goes into let go. The destination lies ahead. We are not alone. It's not about what you have now. It's what you have. It's not about what you have now. What do you have in store? Um, then it repeats the lines. These bones are only temporary. We are not alone. Um, repeats some more lines there. And then, excuse me, it kind of finishes out here with let go. These bones are only temporary. These bones are only temporary. We're not, we are not alone. You are on your own, but not alone. You'll never be alone. So that's kind of the last line there. So I think, I think Maddie Mullins there is definitely referring to, you know, your relationship with God and basically saying that, you know, you'll, you are alone maybe, but you're not actually alone because God is with you at, at all times. So the last line there wrapping up, you'll never be alone. Um, and I think the, the deep message here is, is to, um, you know, remember that your character is important. The, the things that you do, your actions, what you stand for is more important than the items that you have in this, in this world. Um, your time on earth is only temporary, but your, your soul is eternal, I think is what really what they're getting at. And, to, and I would say direct relation to Christianity there with, with those lyrics. So, um, but it definitely gets you thinking about your life, you know, what, what are you focused on with your life? Are you focused more on having material goods and, you know, personal accolades, or are you more focused on having a positive impact on others? So I think it definitely gets those gears turning, but certainly has a positive message as well. So, um, once again, the hollow is loaded full of awesome lyrics. So I would say, be sure to check out the hollow by Memphis Mayfire. If you haven't already, um, that, that entire album, but the redeemed is a great song. The reality is another one that I was going to put on here as well. Um, they're all great songs. So that's going to do it for the lyrical analysis, but let's get into our workout song of the week. And that is going to come from none else, uh, no one else other than Memphis Mayfire. We're going to, we're going to talk about the song, the American dream by them. Um, the song was released on Friday. And if you guys aren't familiar with, um, the YouTube channel, The Breakdown with Nathan and Johnny. Um, be sure to check that page out on YouTube. They do a reaction to the song from Memphis Mayfire, and then they actually do an interview with um, Kellen, the guitarist, and then Maddie Mullins, the vocalist, and they talk really in depth about the song. And, you know, it talks about America right now being really divided. Um, you know, they they go into it more in depth in the interview. So instead of me trying to talk about the interview, um, just go check it out from um, the breakdown with Nathan Johnny. Um, but yeah, th what they say in the interview is that they they're not releasing, or th they're slowly releasing singles. I think that will all go together to be an entire album, and they do these visualizers for each song, and it's all done in the same room. And at the end of releasing all the singles from this one room with these visualizers, it will all go together to be one large concert, essentially. So it's kind of cool. Nobody else is really doing that in the music space right now. So um, really cool and unique for Memphis Mayfire. So um, this new song, though, American Dream that they released on Friday, definitely a heavy track. I would recommend working out to it throw it, they have some more electronic elements to it. Um, but it's definitely heavy, especially heavy for, for them, no doubt. So um, be sure to check that song out by Memphis Mayfire. So that is going to do it for today's episode, gang. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, if you'd like me to do more episodes like this, where I dive into more meaning behind the music, um, be sure to let me know. 
you can check out um, my socials at on Instagram at MC underscore muscle. Um, send me a DM there, let me know. Um, and then also on YouTube, I post the video format of these episodes, um, Metalcore and Muscle on YouTube. So um, if you got recommendations for, for episode content and that type of stuff, um, be sure to go there and let me know. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of your weekend. Take care.